a booktube just a couple of more days before November is up and I'm down to my third and final book on my TBR which is The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo. I'm feeling pretty good that I'm gonna be finishing my TBR on time this time around. I am not recording myself right now because I'm already about to uh, to give my first impressions uh, of the book. I am just about to start it. I haven't really opened the plastic. Uh, I haven't started this book yet. I mean, I always try to capture my immediate thoughts and comments as real time as possible uh, whenever I reach a particular page in a book. But I think this is something that I have never done before, um, which is reading and providing my first impressions on the go. So since I thought that uh, the story is about a girl who's about to join her school's slam poetry club, I thought it's gonna make the experience much more enriching if we're gonna feel the same anxiety as she feels. Uh, so I would be uh, opening this book and starting to read the first five pages documented here so I could give and present my first impressions as accurately as possible. I am going to try to film this without cuts so this will be filmed straight. English is not my first language, of course, so I would definitely stutter and make the sentences incomprehensible for sure. Um, I'm going to try to put in captions somewhere around here uh, as I read so that um, they can still be understood. So yeah, I hope I don't take too long to read it, but yeah. Uh, Come open this with me and let's go read the first five pages of The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo. Part 1. In the beginning was the word. Friday, August 24. Stoop sitting. The summer is made for stoop sitting. And since it's the last week before school starts, Harlem is opening its eyes to September. I scope out this block I've always called home. Watch the old church ladies, chancletas flapping against the pavement, their mouths letting loose a train of island Spanish as they spread he said, she said. Beep papote from down the block as he opens the fire hydrant so the little kids have sprinkler to run through. Listen to honking cabs with Bachata blaring from their open windows, compete with basketballs echoing from the little park. Laugh at the viejos, my father not included, finishing their dominoes tournament with hard slops, and yells of capiku. 
shaped my head as even the drug dealers posted up near the building smile more in the summer. Their hard skulls softening into glue-eyed stares in the direction of the girls in summer dresses and short shorts. Ayo, Siomara, you need to start wearing dresses like that. Shit, you'd be wife up before going back to school. Especially knowing you church girls are all freaks. But I ignore their taunts, enjoy this last bit of freedom, and wait for the long shadows to tell me when mommy is almost home from work, when it's time to sneak upstairs. Unhideable. I am unhideable. Taller than even my father with what mommy has always said was a little too much body for such a young girl. I am the baby fat that settled into D-cups and swinging hips so that the boys who called me a whale in middle school now ask me to send them pictures of myself in a thong. The other girls call me conceited. Ho. Thought. Fast. When your body takes up more room than your voice, you are always the target of well-aimed rumors, which is why I let my knuckles talk for me. Which is why I learned to shrug when my name was replaced by insults. I've forced my skin just as thick as I am. Mira Muchacha is mommy's favorite way to start a sentence. And I know I've already done something wrong when she hits me with, Look, girl. This time, it's Mira Muchacha. Marina from across the street told me you were on the stoop again talking to Los Vendedores. Like usual, I bite my tongue and don't correct her. Because I hadn't been talking to the drug dealers, they'd been talking to me. But she says she doesn't want any conversation between me and those boys, or any boys at all. And she better not hear about me hanging out like a wet shirt on a clothesline just waiting to be worn, or she would go ahead and be the one to wring my neck. Oyste, she asks, but walks away before I can answer. Sometimes I wanna tell her the only person in this house who isn't heard. It's me. Names. I'm the only one in the family without a biblical name. Shit. Siomara isn't even Dominican. I know because I googled it. It means one was ready for war. And truth be told, the description is about right. Because I even tried to come into the world in a fighting stance. Feet first. Had to be cut out of mommy after she'd given birth to my twin brother. Savior, just fine. And my name labors out of some people's mouths in that same awkward and painful way. Until I have to slowly say, Si Omara. I've learned not to flinch the first day of school at teachers as. They get stuck stupid trying to figure it out. Mommy says she thought it was a saint's name. Gave me this gift of battle and now curses. How well I live up to it. My parents probably wanted a girl who would sit in the pews wearing pretty florals and a soft smile. They got combat boots and a mouth silent until it's sharp as an island machete. The first words, Pero tu no eres facil, is a phrase I've heard my whole life. When I come home with my knuckles scraped up, Pero tu no eres facil. When I don't wash the dishes quickly enough, or when I forget to scrub the tub, Pero tu no eres facil. Sometimes it's a good thing. When I do well on an exam or the rare time I get an award, Pero tu no eres facil. 
when my mother's pregnancy was difficult and it was all because of me because I was turned around and they thought that I would die or worse that I would kill her so they held a prayer circle at church and even Father Sean showed up at the emergency room Father Sean who held my mother's hand as she labored me to the world and Poppy paced behind the doctor who said this was the most difficult birth she's been a part of. But instead of dying, I came out wailing, waving my tiny p fist, and the first thing Poppy said, the first words I ever heard, Pero tu no eres fácil. You sure, you sure ain't an easy one. Alright, um... Those were the, uh, I think, the first five poems of The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo. And that's juicy. Um, don't you just love the world building in those verses? Those are beautiful. Um, I am so excited for this one. Uh, I love how from the first poem alone... It was already very atmospheric. Um, even in poetry, she was able to paint a very picturesque perspective of how their neighborhood looks like, uh, the people around her, and what is um, the environment like. And also, she has already given us an introduction to her struggles and what she feels about it. So that's very effective. Uh, this, I think, is the most, uh, well, my favorite out of what I've read. Let me check. At this point right now, um, if I am reading it uh, without recording it, I would have probably coded a lot already or probably tagged it. Um, but yeah, I really like the uh, part uh, which talked about her being unhideable, uh, where she described her physique or her body. That's very important. So, my goodness, I'm gonna be in a roller coaster uh, with this book. So, yeah, um, I'm gonna be reading the rest now. Uh, it's the weekend for me here in the Philippines, so I'm looking forward to a great time. The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo. So I'm page 138 now uh, on The Poet X. And I don't know, man, they're cute or whatever, but um, it's probably something wrong with me. Why do I struggle with um, appreciating a romance lately? I don't think I've ever had a good um, romance read this year so far. This is probably the cutest one yet, but it's still really not pulling me in as much as I want to. And I realize uh, it's because the family dynamics and the uh, the conflicts uh, about the family relationship in here is like a hundred a thousand times more compelling than the romance that's why i'm so focused and so drawn into how family is depicted on here that i pretty much cannot give as much attention to everything else. The way each of the family members were depicted on here in the lens of uh, the eyes of uh, Siamara, our main character, is just so beautiful. So masterfully done. Like even in the simplest of words, she can evoke like a myriad of feelings in you. That's skillful storytelling right there. Wow. 
Anyway, I'm not gonna take it against the book if the uh, the romance is not as strong as I was expecting because I didn't come here I didn't come here for the love story I came here because I would like to know how this girl has fallen in love with poetry and how that has helped her in her life and I'm getting it so I'm satisfied I'm on page 208 of the Poetics and let me just go get some water. The last, what, five or six poems of these last couple of pages are so intense. Whew. I'm sweating. Wow. <clears throat> Let's rush <laughs> Page 220, page 220, and can I just, I'm so proud of her. Page 311 of The Poet X. <sighs> Do I even want to talk about I can't imagine how how much pain uh, the main character must be feeling at that moment.
right, I'm, I'm gonna fix myself up, I'm so sorry. I finally finished The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo and can I just congratulate myself for going through that and making it out alive. There's a whole 14 minute footage of me just being a sobbing mess. <laughs> and right after I ended recording myself, I just remained crying. Uh, remained teary-eyed throughout the uh, the rest of the uh, the book all the way until the end. Don't worry, I won't subject anyone who will pass by my channel or anyone who may stumble on these videos to that kind of unnecessary messy drama. I think if I would attempt to talk and go into detail again as to why this book uh, impacted me that much. I will just start tearing up and crying again so I'd probably not. <laughs> For now, uh, I just think I would say this. Um, this to me is why literature, why poetry and prose is something that I would really never consider as a luxury. I've always looked at it as an essential, something that is necessary. I've always looked uh, at books as mirrors, as uh, a way to look at how there are so many things in the world that can be universally shared by hundreds, thousands, millions of other souls. And there's comfort in knowing that. But at the same time, there are also truths that are only specific to a certain few. Maybe just one person, maybe only you. And that still counts. That's still valid. And that still deserves to be known. That is just so empowering to me. Also, can I just say that um, the conclusion, the uh, the ending that the uh, the book went for, is something that I would have never really predicted. Going into this book, uh, I admit that I do have some kind of assumption as to how this will turn out because of the uh, the tone the uh, the mood uh, that's been established so I was honestly at the back of my head um, assuming that oh so this is how it's gonna turn out this is what's gonna happen for sure but wow the book really told me that's what you thought. Look at how I will resolve this. And you know what? It's not even like it's a groundbreaking or never been done before resolution that took place. It just did what has been always so simple. But for some reason, most YA books never, never sell for doing. And that's the uh, very unique novelty in that because, wow. This book really remained faithful and consistent to the heart of its message, which is how words really have this power. Words can do things that you would never imagine would be done. And not to diminish our teenage angst or anything, but this book somehow, somehow really introduced a perspective to me of, you know, maybe sometimes um, our teenage years is one big miscommunication trope that um, 
sometimes if if we really sit down and talk sometimes miracles can happen it's so stunning to me how this book can really encourage you to come up with your own realizations to learn on your own to really take from it what you can it's never preachy it doesn't enforces uh, what the message it would like to impart down your throat no it doesn't do that but it just shows you a different side of what if what could have happened if things turned out this way and I am mind blown and my heart is warm and full and grateful I really don't want to cry again so <laughs> I'll probably just um, wrap up this uh, review on here please 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 um, if you can give this book a try and let me know let me know if you like it what a wonderful magical powerful book